Good day everyone, welcome to another edition of On the Bench at Sport Fishing on the Fly. I'm your host Deb. Today I'm going to be tying for you a fly called the Ridgeback. And this uh, pattern was given to me by a friend of mine, Rob Viala. And he uh, originally tied it back in 2003 up in the Caribou. And I've fished this pattern, it works really well. I have it in a couple different colors. This is a bit of a variation. The original pattern has um, more of a red, uh, red in the tail instead of maroon and uh, like a ready orange hackle. So make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For a hook, I'm using a size six curved hook, Daiichi, and uh, you could use a straight shank and it can be anywhere from a size six to a uh, 10 is fine. I'm going to put some lead wire on there, 0.02 or 0 0.020. For a bead, I'm just using a red glass bead in large. They come in large or one eighth size. For thread, I'm using uh, Semperfly Classic Waxed in Black. I think it's 12 watt. For the tail, I'm using Black Marabou combined with Maroon Marabou. And it's like a two third, one third. Two third black, one third maroon. For the flash in the tail, I'm using red crystal flash. Uh, Simplify makes crystal flash. You can use any crystal flash. And for the flashback, I'm using Mirar uh, Mirage Tinsel in large. And you can, this comes on a spool as well. Um, you can find it at the fly shop. And um, I think Rob's, all, he tied it with lateral scale as well, tinsel. So any kind of tinsel that you want. For wire, I'm using black fine wire. And for the body, I'm using a, a mix of dubbing. Ice dub and midnight fire, or you could use just plain black. And I've got Arizona semi-seal and burgundy, and I've mixed these together. Sort of at that two-third, one-third ratio again. And for the hackle, I'm using a whiting bugger pack in maroon. So in my vise, I've got my size six uh, curved hook. You can use a straight shank, that's fine. I like these curved hooks for leeches and buggers and stuff lately. Um, I have 0 0.020 lead wire, and I'm just gonna uh, wrap it on my hook here. Because of the glass bead, it doesn't have any weight. So I wanna give it just a little bit of weight. You can put the weight more towards the front for that undulating motion, which is really good for buggers. Now I'm going to take my thread and start it just behind the bead here. Wrap and go over top of this lead, trapping it in place. And also just covering it up a little bit which the tail will do anyway, and the dubbing. And then just bring your thread back to the point where the barb would be. About there. For the tail, it's two thirds uh, black marabou and one third uh, maroon or red. The original pattern was done with red. Um, I've seen it done in brown. Imagine you could do it in any color. Olive would be probably really good too. And the tail, I wanted about the length of the shank. Not much longer than that. I'm just going to take some of this fluff, pull it out. Helps it sit on the hook a lot nicer. Not bulk up so much. Couple longer ones there. Next, I'm going to take my uh, little piece of maroon and I'm just going to chop the stem out of this. So I don't need that much, anyways. Place that right in the middle.
And the marabou helps to build a nice little like underbody anyways. And I'm going to take one more piece of black and just put it on top. I bring my thread back to the back here, the point where the barb would be. I'm just going to check and make sure it's on both sides evenly, and it is. And then I'm going to go around underneath the tail with my thread and just pull it up and then pull it up and make a couple of wraps there. And then that tail will have less chance of wrapping around the hook. Next, I'm going to tie in a little piece of crystal flash or an accent. A little shine at the tail. Make a couple of wraps on my side here and then bring it across. And then I'm just going to wind it down the hook, placing it on each side of the tail. When you get to this last wrap, you can just check it. Yeah, it's good. Snip that off. Next, I'm going to tie in some uh, flashback here. Come back up to the front. Rob uses a lateral scale or mirage tinsel for this. Let's get that right on top there. You just want to make sure that this tinsel is right on top. You don't want it off to one side or the other, or it'll look funny. I know because I've done it. <laughs> and next, um, take your piece of wire and tie that in. I'm going to go up to the front here, attach it, and I'm just going to bend it back and wrap over it. You want your wire to be very uh, tied in really well on the woolly bugger. It's going to hold my hackle in place. Next is my body, and I'm going to use a little bit of, I actually tried to do this body a couple of ways. I tried it with a dubbing loop, and I found it was just too thick. I probably wasn't putting it in there sparse enough. So you can use a dubbing loop if you wish. Um, I'm just going to spin it on my thread, and because it's made with a lot of ice dub in it, the smaller pieces you take um, to spin it on there with, the easier it is. Just do it sparse, and you can always thicken it up by wrapping over it rather than trying to put a giant chunk of it on there. Always isn't the best idea, especially with ice dub. And then I find you can uh, build like a nice tapered body this way too. And you can still brush it out. I didn't use dubbing loops for years. If it gets too long, you can pull it out. Trim it off. Use a little more wax. I just find it helps a little bit, even if it's wax thread, especially when I, with ice dub. You know if you've worked with it how hard it is sometimes to spin on your thread. I got a chunk of marabou there. And then, you don't want to go too close to the bead. Um, leave a tiny little space in behind there for the hackle to sit in there, as well as the flashback has to be tied off. and little collar. So you don't want it tight against there, but up against there. Next, just bring your flash back over top. Pinch it there with your thumb and then make a few wraps and then you want to pull it tight, look down on it, make sure it's centered. Do a couple wraps in front. Snip that off. Next, I'm going to tie in my hackle, and with um, with this kind of hackle, I um, I'm going to choose one of the longer feathers here, and I take it and I measure it against my hook. I fluff the feathers out here and see how long they actually are against my gape. They're a bit shorter towards the tip and a bit longer here. And ideally, with a woolly bugger, you want the longer feathers at the front, the shorter feathers at the back. So I'm going to strip it like right below where I want it to start. 
snip that out of there. And then if I'm looking down on the feather, I'm going to take the right side of the feather and I'm going to strip that off because that's the side on my fly that's going to turn first is that right side. I'm going to do a couple turns in front of that stem, really hold it on there really well and then bend it back with my thumbnail before I snip it off. It's a bit thick in that area so sometimes it's hard to snip it really nice and close. If that happens you can still bend it backwards and go over top of it with your thread. The hackle's going to hide it anyways but you just want to make sure it's not going to pull out. And then I'm going to take a couple of wraps at the front here before working my way back in nice, even turns. And when I get to the last wrap here, I'm going to take my wire at the top here. Hang on, there's a little piece of marabou around it. That won't matter, it'll pull out. And I'm just going to cross my hackle with my wire, bringing the wire towards myself. Hold on to it and make another turn right over top of that other one. And then I'm just going to do a third turn in there to hold that nice and strong. And then I'm going to wiggle my wire through <clears throat> my hackle, trying not to trap too much down in even spaces. If you want, you can actually use your thread to do this as well. You can bring your thread to the back and trap your feather. Uh, some people tie the feather in from the back and wrap it forwards with no wire and then, or they use wire too, they just uh, wrap it the other way and then they tie it off at the front. There's multiple ways to tie a woolly bugger hackle in, depending on, you know, how you want it, what you're comfortable with. This is the main way that I do it. I'm tying things like pumpkin heads and stuff. Just twist that wire out of there. Oh, that wire is good and strong. I'm just going to snip it off for now. And then snip my hackle out. Bring everything back and just build a little collar. And whip finish. Yeah, this fly, uh, my friend Rob said he was fishing. Uh, he created it up in the caribou one night during some, uh, with a bunch of buddies. They were up there fishing Sheridan. And uh, yeah, he was drinking some beer and decided to tie some flies. He tied this pattern up for everyone. And uh, he said most of the guys that took it out the next day went out and caught some fish with it. So he's been using it ever since. He uh, gave us a couple uh, many years ago. I had this pattern, except it was in red in my fly box. and caught lots of fish with it and then ended up losing the red one but I still have a brown one in there somewhere that I've caught fish on as well. So that's a great pattern. You can take your uh, velcro after if you want and just brush out some of that dubbing. Just do it very gently. You don't want to rip your wire out. You could use a brush for this as well. Or you could brush it out before you do your hackle. You know you could take a bodkin and uh, pick it out not to pick that wire out of there. Yeah, there you have it, the Ridgeback. Thanks for joining me on this episode of On the Bench at Sport Fishing on the Fly. Take care and tight lines, everyone.